Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the third tutorial in this series on developing a survival game. In this video, we'll set up our movement controls. In particular, we'll set up the ability for our character to move forwards and backwards as well as left and right. We'll also set up the ability for our character to turn and look up and down. In addition, we'll determine if the player is using a controller or a keyboard and mouse. And finally, we'll set it up so the player can inverse their controls if they want. This series has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Random Number Generator. That said, fire up your project and let's make a start. Welcome back to the editor, everybody. And you might notice something a bit different. I have the correct colors back here. So all I did, by the way, was just very quickly not go into the wrong folder, but uh, just recreated the cube material from, well, not from scratch. I copied and pasted the node information from the other, from the prep file, or actually from the other recording file, the one that had problems that led me to do the third recording. By the way, there was no problem with the file itself. Actually, there was a problem with the recordings that I didn't catch until um, a fair way in. So I've actually started releasing these recordings to Patreon supporters very early on. All of that said, sorry for the random rant at the start or ramble, I guess. In today's episode, what we're going to do is we are going to set up our controls for our character using both mouse and keyboard, as well as a controller. If you can hear me moving the left thumbstick. So the first thing we want to do is actually set up our controls and remove the unnecessary controls that came as part of this project. Sorry, I try not to cough every day as I said that. So I'm gonna to go to project settings under settings. I'm gonna pin that back in there. And in here, I'm gonna to go to my inputs. And we have action mapping and access mapping. We need to take care of both of these. Just really quickly, I don't have VR. Well, I mean, I do have VR, but we're not doing VR on this project, so bye. We can get rid of that. For jump, let's see what we have in here. I clicked that way too many times. Spacebar, that's good for a keyboard. Gamepad, face button, bottom. I'm happy with that. That's VR, that's VR, that's VR. But bye to those. All right, that's good. We're going to be adding more to this section later on, of course. Next, we have our access mapping. And for our move forward, we're going to keep our W for forward or S for backwards. Actually, technically, S is forwards minus one. So I want you to pay attention to these values because we'll be setting up inverse controls as well. So we'll keep these. We'll get rid of the up, down. We will leave the gamepad thumbstick, but we'll get rid of the motion controller thumbstick. All right, let's just close that out. Close that out too. We have our move right which has our A and D for left and right. So our left key is minus right, really, minus one to the right. So just bear that in mind again. We're gonna think about that for inverse, but more so for our gamepad, because we're only gonna do up and down inverse uh, options for the mouse and keyboard. For gamepad, we'll do both up and down and left and right. You can actually very easily expand from what I'm doing if you wanna include that. We're gonna get rid of the motion controller again. Apparently I didn't get rid of the motion control like I thought I did. Turn rate, well, we can honestly just get rid of that. We're gonna do something else to control for that. Turn, however, we want to keep. And in here, we're gonna add another one. So we have our mouse X, our mouse position in the X. We are going to add our gamepad, right thumbstick, X axis. And we're gonna leave this also at one. We have our look up rate, which let's be fair, we're gonna replace. And we have look up. Now look up is where things get a bit weird. Notice that in the mouse, it's negative Y as normal, or negative one, I keep saying Y, sorry, because it's mouse Y. For our gamepad, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do gamepad right thumb stick Y axis. We're also gonna do this at negative one. So let's just look at our controls for our thumbstick here. We have the X, Y axis on the left, Y on the right, and X on the left and X on the right. 
So we're following some traditional movement patterns. But do you remember these values? Because we're doing inverse, you need to remember which one's positive, which one's negative. We're going to come back to that point later on. Next, what we need to do is we need to create a way for our system to know if we're on our controller or our game or our keyboard and uh, mouse. It's a gamepad, and the gamepad's a controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my core folder here, and I'm going to create a new subfolder that I will call enums. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use an enumeration just to make this a bit easier to read. And all an enumeration is an enum is a, a method of just having a, simply put, a readable integer. So it's going to be an index at a certain value. We'll be able to read it. makes it easier for us. So I'm just going to call this E controller selection. And again, don't worry about that question mark. That is just my GitHub telling me that it is not sure what wants me to do with it, mostly because I haven't saved it yet. Then it's going to be a plus sign. So this will be our mouse for mouse and keyboard. To remind me that's mouse and keyboard, I'm going to put in for mouse and keyboard use. And then we have gamepad. All right, I'm just going to save this. With that saved, we're going to go to our core character, BP first person character. And we have a lot of things we're going to do in here. But where we're going to start is we're going to start by creating a method for determining if we are on our, or sorry, for setting our mouse versus key, um, mouse versus controller. Now that said, this method is only going to be here for debugging purposes. So I'm going to create an event begin play. And this is just because I, I want this to run on our begin play. We will be changing this up a bit. And I'm going to create the method for, actually no, I'm going to first create the, the method or the function. And it's going to be called set controller type. And again, because we're trying to keep good organization, can't think of that word for a second. I'm going to put this in a category called controller. And then I'm going to use the uninterrupted vertical bar, which will make a subfolder called master. So see controller master. In here, all I'm going to do is have a variable set called controlling device enum, which will, of course, be of our e controller selection. And I'm going to put my controller selection in my controller master. So I'm going to kind of mirror. I won't always do this, but I'm going to try to mirror as much as I can between our functions and our variables. Typically, what I'm calling master will always mirror just because they shouldn't be used elsewhere. So we have that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a getter function. And a getter, all it's going to do is get this information for us. Actually, no, we're not going to create the getter just yet. We will be creating a getter, by the way. I just want to show you why we're going to be doing it this way. So first, I'm going to put that there. Oh, no, 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 I lied to you. I'm going to be putting our set controller there. There we go. And I'm just going to comment this out. This is for debugging, because I will be moving this to a different section later on, or a different blueprint later on, most likely. And we are going to then set our inverse values. So the way this works, it's a little bit hectic, to say the least. I'm going to pull off of here, and I'm going to do a branch. And again, what we're going to use for these will be set out elsewhere. We're just going to pass the information through to here. I'm going to create a new bool, so I'm just going to pull off of here, promote to variable, and this will be b invert access y. Now I use b because it's an old coding convention. So old that when I hit enter, even though the B is there, it doesn't show up here. And B just stands for Boolean. You will see that Epic does this in their own work. You'll see that they also include F at the start of their structures. Um, I name my structures in, in this project F. So um, you will see some of those sort of conventions. I'm just going to put this in a category that I'm going to call Bools, which isn't really descriptive, but I just like having my Boolean variables in one spot. And what we're going to do is we're going to Ooh. You know what? We are going to create that getter. I had a, a, I'm looking at my a, a last recording file, and I just found a, a silly mistake I made. 
Um, so I had done this entire thing where I, I got us to the stage where we need to turn, determine our controller and I talked about getters. So I, I talked about getters and setters in one of the prep videos. I know that much, or at least I plan to. So I'm not gonna worry about explaining them here. We're just gonna have something that returns our controller type. So we're gonna get controller type. This is a pure function. Usually a getter is a pure function when and where possible. I know we'll be using interfaces. By the way, I'm putting in controller master. So I know that's not always going to be the case. I'm gonna do a return node and being lazy, I'm gonna just get this node and pass it out that way. And by lazy, I mean I didn't actually type into there. It's always good to have getters. Now, technically I don't need to use a getter because we're in the class that we're working with. So, eh, but I still want to use getters where I can. So we're gonna get the controlling device and we're gonna do a switch on controller selection. We're gonna do one off the true. I'm gonna duplicate this node, plug it in there. And we're gonna do one off the false. So what we're going to do is we're gonna create one variable that we'll set four different ways. Really, if you're paying attention to polymorphism and what's going on here, we're only really setting it one way. Actually, no, we are setting it four different ways. Sorry, I lied. Um, mostly because I forgot something I said to you. Notice the difference between our values in some of these. Notice how some of them work. So what we're going to do is very quickly compile because I know this is gonna be true. And I know it's true because I pulled off that condition. I'm gonna just mark it to false real quick. And I'm going to create a new float variable called inverse access y. I am going to put this in my controller. I'm gonna create a new category, by the way. Controller settings. And I'm going to make sure this is a float before I do the next thing. I am going to right click, duplicate, and this will be my x axis. So on the y, I'm gonna get it once here. And I'm going to set it to negative one on the mouse. I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm gonna set it to one on the gamepad. Not negative one, just one. All right, I'm just gonna move that back where I had it, and down is what I meant to do. And I'm going to duplicate this first node here, and I'm gonna set my mouse to one, and I'm gonna duplicate the other node and set my gamepad to negative one when it's false on the inverse Y. And that is due to our settings. This is just going to make life a little bit easier. Next, we'll take care of our inverse X axis. So all of these are gonna to go to the same one. I'm just gonna pull off the inverse Y here and do a branch. Put a reroute in to make it nice and pretty and lovely and all that fun jazz. I am just rambling to eat up time while I try to get that reroute where I wanted it. It did not work well. And again, we want all of these to go into the next branch regardless of what's happening. And we don't want that to happen there. I'm gonna duplicate this bool just to make my life easier. And it's gonna be inverse access X. And I'm gonna plug that into there. And I am going to actually take all these nodes here, actually including the reroutes. I'm gonna duplicate them over here. I'm gonna plug that into the true and plug that one into the false. I probably could have just copied the branch as well, to be fair. Line that up. And because I'm a bit of a perfectionist about that. And now I'm going to take my inverse X and I'm gonna set it by dragging it over and waiting for it to say change node to write inverse axis X. And actually I lied to you slightly. We're gonna break that. We're only doing this for the gamepad. And so I'm just gonna plug that reroute into there. And on the gamepad, I am going to set this value to negative one. Likewise, I am going to delete that one, plug that directly into there and take my inverse axis X hold it over my inverse axis Y until this one reads change node to write inverse axis X. 
and this one will be one. All right, I am going to select every node from that branch off our begin play all the way to those ending reroutes and collapse to function. This will be my set inverse values function. Let me just move this back over here. And I'm gonna put my set inverse values function in my controller settings subcategory. I'm gonna pop it open. And I'm just gonna clean it up by moving that up there and putting a return node in. It's always good practice, even though these are virtual voids, to put a return node in. Old habits die hard, what can I say? All right, and next what we're going to do is we're gonna take care of the actual movement because you know we have all this stuff right now, but you know, what we're gonna do with it? Well, first we're gonna move this jump off to the side. We'll, we'll tackle jump later on. And we're gonna move mouse and, I love when it does this. We're gonna move mouse input off to the side just for a moment and we're gonna just focus on our movement input. Now, as I mentioned in the prep video, I'm gonna violate a rule of polymorphism and the reason for that is I want you to be able to see some stuff more easily, but in reality, you don't really need to have the two functions. We're about, actually, we're gonna create three functions. You don't need the two non-pure functions we're gonna create. We're gonna create a pure function just to make this easier to read, and we're going to, and to abstract a tiny bit. We're gonna take this get uh, control rotation, break rotator, get forward, get right vector, all those nodes in between those, and collapse to function. This will be get, character direction. It is a pure function, it's a getter. Again, not all pure functions are getters, but in this case, yeah. Forward vector for that input return value one, return value two is right vector. All right, and we're just gonna move that to the side for a moment, and I'm gonna just move our move forward over here for a moment. I am going to break that and what we're going to do is we're gonna actually also break this. And now we wanna get our controller type again, but this time what we're going to do instead of getting our controller type is we wanna check controller type. And what we're gonna do is very simply put a branch in first. You'll see if you're new to my way of doing things, I like doing my functions outside and then collapsing them down. Um, if you prefer just creating the function, I will be doing that as well, but early on I just find this easier. So I'm gonna get my controlling device enum, and I wanna know, is it equal to, so I'm gonna put two equals in, my mouse. So I'm not gonna change anything that setting. I am, however, gonna take these two nodes, and I am going to collapse them to a function. And this is technically a getter, but I'm gonna call it check controller type. It is a pure function, and I'm gonna have the name here, b is mouse, so I know true or false. It is a mouse true, it is not a mouse false. And I am going to put this in my category of controller master because it relates to our master settings for our controller. I'm just gonna tuck that there, right there. And if it is a mouse, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go directly into our add movement. In fact, actually in both cases, let me just move this down here. I am going to duplicate this and on the false, I am going to go directly into add movement as well. What's going to be different, and I'm gonna be reroute into this later on, don't worry about not having a reroute there, is I am going to, actually I'm gonna break that for a moment. Don't worry why we broke that, it's just because I, I'm gonna, we'll plug it in in just a moment. Just leave it unplugged for now, just trust me on that. What's the difference between these two nodes? Well, in one case our access value will just come directly from our access value, sorry, our scale value will come directly from our access value in one case. And that is in the case of the mouse. I might be violating my own rule here of putting the three route in. And the other case we have, sorry if you just heard a really weird noise in the background. Um, my, my pipes in my house are, for my heaters are acting weird, despite the fact of me not having my heaters on. For this one, going into our controller or our gamepad, I'm gonna do float times float. You know, it's annoying when it does that. Float times float. And we're gonna plug directly into there. And I'm gonna get my in, or sorry, my, I'm gonna create a variable I'm gonna call controller sensitivity. And I'm just going to, actually I'm gonna create a whole bunch of variables for my controller sensitivity. So, 
we have our inverse x and y here. I'm just going to duplicate this, and I'm going to do my controller sensitivity minin, as in minimum. And I'm going to then duplicate this again. Oh, I didn't mean to hit find. Do, control W is just easier for me to do while I'm doing recordings. This will be controller sensitivity current, and hopefully I'm spelling everything right. And this will be controller sensitivity max. Now the min and max we will only be using later in this series to be able to control how much the user can change these settings. The one we use now, and the one the player actually uses in the game, well, you've guessed it as I put this reroute in, is our current. So we're going to take our current since it, that's our max. We're going to take our current and plug it in here. Really quickly, I'm going to compile. And I'm going to plug in some numbers here. Now, I've worked these numbers through by changing my min or my current to find the values that I think are the most acceptable sort of range. My min is 20. My current is 40. And my max is 60. So what I did to choose 40 as my current was I found the sort of minimum and maximum I liked and literally just went halfway between them. That's all. All right, I'm going to take all these nodes and I'm going to collapse them down to a function. Hey, that worked well. And this will be my move forward function. Now I'm going to just put my world direction as my forward vector. I'm going to move my float up here and this will be my axis value. Let's just line that up there, pop this open, do this, put some reroutes in just so we can have something that's a little bit easier to read. And now we'll plug in that Y value. Oh, let me create this other reroute. Thank you. And I'm just going to line that up down there. And I'm going to put in a return node as usual. All right. There we go. There's our move forward taken care of. So just line that up there. We can drag this back up. As for our move right, like I said, we're going to violate polymorphism. All I'm going to do is duplicate this function. Sorry, I just realized that get character direction and our um, movements weren't categorized. So get character direction is going to be a controller master. And our move forward is also a controller master. Ooh. Sorry, I apparently hit pure instead of controller master there when I did that. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to name it move right. Literally, all I'm going to do. Well, no, no, no. I'm going to switch around my uh, input on my forward vector, which I'm now going to name right vector. This is just a name. The name has no meaning. It's a, a clue to me on what I want to plug into this. So literally, we have the same function twice. And I'm going to just get my move right, plug that into there, plug that into there, plug that into there. I'm using control to move the pins, by the way. And now all I'm going to do is just line this up. There we go. And line this up. So we have a little bit of a smaller profile for these nodes. And because of that, I can move that this way. All right, just really quickly, I'm going to test the keyboard and mouse to make sure it works. Uh-oh. What is our error? Oh, hello. It says move forward on this instead of move right. So that sometimes happens. There we go. Just right click, refresh. If that doesn't work, delete the node and put it back in. Don't delete it from here. Delete it from the graph. Hit play. Hey, my mouse still works. My keyboard still works. All right. Now comes our, uh, our character rotation. I'm actually going to rename this character rotation in just a moment. Actually, I'm going to do that now before I forget. So this is character rotation. I do know I'm going to want a little bit more room. And I'm just going to move the lookup to the top for a moment and move this to the bottom because we're going to do our lookup first. 
And like usual, we're gonna start on the outside. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this and we're gonna break that as well. We're gonna need two of these pitch nodes. And like before, we're gonna do a branch and we're gonna get what our controller type is or check our controller type. Are we on a mouse? Are we on a keyboard? From here, what we're going to do is we are going to actually have some different stuff happening for each of these. We are going to go directly into that on our execute, but we're gonna change our values. So let me just put a reroute here to move this down a bit. What we're gonna do for our access value is a float times float on both of these. So float times float. And I'm just gonna put another one of these in, put a reroute in to make this a little bit easier to see. Line that up with that reroute. By the way, if you don't know how to line up, just select the nodes you want and hit Q. There are other keys for lining up depending on how you want to orientate things, but Q works really well. I do try to get them as close as possible, so if I have to move the one I didn't want to move, it's easier. These multiplies will go into our values. In fact, actually, to be fair on this one, we could just do this without this check, but it's probably better practice really to have this in. So again, if you want to update this, think about using different ways of doing this. Also think about doing things instead of having this check where you use a select node for what goes in here. I will say later in the series, I will be using select nodes instead, but we're going to build things up. We're going to work on logic, but we're going to adhere to OOP as much as possible. There will be some violations here or there. Like in this video, we're going to have two pins in here and we have controller sensitivity. Now we're gonna do a mouse sensitivity. So I'm just gonna duplicate that. I don't know why I duplicated the first one. Mouse sensitivity min. And the mouse will actually work for both controller and um, mouse in this case. We'll do a current. And then finally, we will do a max. I can't believe I forgot the word current there for a second. I'm gonna compile so I can get into the file and set my settings. Set my settings, that sounds so, so awkward. I'm gonna set my min for my mouse sensitivity to 0 0.01, so 0 0.01. My current to one. And my max, did I just duplicate the same? Oh, I know why it's all 20, because I duplicated it, yeah at my max to two. So I'm gonna take my mouse current, plug that into the X, and this is where we have to worry about our inverses. So I'm gonna take my inverse access Y, so it's our look up and down. Ooh, that's also X I just grabbed, our Y, and plug it into there. Put another pin in there, and I'm just going to duplicate these nodes. Plug that into there. Plug that into there and select all these nodes. Collapse to function. This function will be our lookup function. Our lookup function will just name, rename our input pin as access value. And this will go into controller movement. Sorry, our move forward should be in controller movement, not master. Same with our move right. All right, now that we've done that, let's do our turn. So in this case, our turn is actually gonna be different. We are going to do something, well, besides using a different uh, node, our yaw versus pitch, when we do our branch, we actually do care this time. We are gonna have different settings for mouse and uh, controller based on what we're putting in. So for these, yeah, we violate polymorphism. You can just have the same thing. For this, yeah, you can use a select node or not because it's really the same thing. This time, however, it's a bit different. By the way, this is also going into our movement folder. We are going to get our controller type or check our controller type. And we're gonna go again into the true on that. And with the false, we'll take a duplicate and we'll put the duplicate into here. Again, you could get rid of this branch and just use a select node involving our check controller type. Hint for something you might want to do to improve upon what we're doing here. We're gonna pull off of our axis value and I'm gonna multiply, float by float. This will go directly into there. And let's put a lovely little reroute in. 
Reroutes are our friends. We love our reroutes. And how I was going to move that float times float pin anyway. We are going to then do another float times float down here. This will have three inputs, whereas the top only has two. And we'll plug that return value into that value there. And we'll take mouse sensitivity current, plug it into this one. Mouse sensitivity current, plug it into that one down there. And then we'll inverse access X here. That's what makes these different. We have our Y axis, and we've got to come in here and put our reroutes or our returns in, and our reroute for the return. You don't actually need the reroutes. I just think they look better. All right, and let's go back to our event graph, and let's just grab all these nodes, collapse to function, and this is our turn. And turn will go directly into our movement folder. Place that there, pop it open, and now we're ready to debug this. Now debugging in this case is going to actually take some work. So the first thing we want to do is plug all that in. We want to make sure that things are in the right order. So I'm going to hit play. I'm going to move the mouse to look up by moving my mouse up. Look down to look down. Left, right forward, backward, right, left. So my keyboard is working in a non-inverse setting. Now what I'm going to do is just, I'm gonna mark both my inverse axis X and Y to true, even though only one affects the game, keyboard and mouse. So I'm gonna move my mouse up and I'm looking down. I'm gonna move my mouse down and I'm looking up, left, right, so that's correct. I do not like inverse mouses. Oh God, for people who do, I'm sorry if whoever hurt you. I am, I'm deeply sorry. All right, now that test is done. All I'm gonna do, I've been sitting here with a Xbox controller on my lap for a bit, is I'm gonna plug an Xbox controller into my system and I'm going to switch this over to gamepad. Now, by the way, I could be using the gamepad the entire time. The gamepad setting is more for inverse control settings. So I'm gonna hit play. Make sure I click on the screen. Oh, okay. Well, looks like I have a bit of a problem. That is most likely just my gamepad being weird. Give me one second. All right, yeah, that was just my gamepad being weird. For some reason, I have to, um, whenever I have OBS open, I have to do something before I can actually use it. So there's my backwards, forwards, left, right, look up, look down and my left or right controls, so that's working perfectly fine. My jump is working. I am now going to inverse my axes, and I hate this part of the test, by the way. And I am going to hit play. I'm going to move forward. I'm gonna click on the screen. I'm gonna move forwards, backwards, left, right, jump. I'm gonna look up. Oh wait, now I'm looking down, because it's inverse. I'm gonna look up. Oh wait, it's up. Now oh, I, I messed my own joke up. Ah, you know what I meant to say. I'm now pushing the stick to look to my left, so I look to my right, push the stick to my right to look left, and my controller is inverted. So, we have finished what we've set out to do in this video. All I'm gonna do is get rid of these settings and turn this back to mouse. I'm gonna control S, save everything, compile, and I'm gonna close all my windows to the right of my event graph. So I'm gonna leave my viewport and construction script open. And I'm going to close the character controller out as well, or character player out as well. That takes us through what we need to do in this video. If you've enjoyed working on your movement system, being able to use both gamepad and your mouse and keyboard, then please go ahead and hit that like button down below. It really does help this channel out. It you know helps us with the YouTube algorithms, lets people know about us as well. So you're helping others out, you know, who might be looking for a series like this. If you want to be here when we start working on our next system, which will be bringing in our sprint, then stamina, then health, then hunger systems, make sure to hit that subscribe and notify icon. If you don't hit the notify icon, YouTube might assume you don't want to really know when these videos are out and might not tell you for a while. And if you want to join us on Discord, please feel free to do so. There is a link down in the description below, below the link to download the assets for this project. 
And if you want to help support this channel or want a copy of this project, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Patreon supporters at upper tiers get instant access to the project. At other tiers, they get access to the project once the YouTube series is complete. That said, this series has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors such as Haynes, Quad Manson, and Rian. And Rian, as you'll find out, is also the person who did a lot of the extra art assets for this series. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day!